uh, on the one side of the house, and he said he wanted to be near the door. So we put him through the, through the door, and uh, after moving him to the door a couple of weeks, about two weeks later, the movie, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe came out. And if you see that movie, when the, when, the, when the child first crossed into the spiritual land, the first person they meet is Pan. He's like an opener of the way. This is a form of harvest. You see what I'm saying? So, we set up a shrine to him at the doorway and he's opened up shit. All kind of powerful things is going down. But, this God and this God is one and the same. It's also a form of the baby Jesus, the baby Eros, which you know is Cupid, mm -hmm. and Rome, Eros in Greece, Horus, Harpocrat, Heruparcrat is what it's called. This is the Greek word Harpocrat, but it's called Heruparcrat or Heruparcrat in Egypt. It's all the same baby. The baby Krishna, there's a baby Shiva, there's a baby Buddha. It's all that same child energy, but the child is talking about a new beginning other than incarnating into the earth. It's a doorway to the next realm. So we said, oh, this child energy. So after a while, then he started coming and it was like saying, in order to act, they say, like I said again, in order for you to get to the other realm, like they tell you in the Bible, you must come as a child. Well, in order to access this, and the best way to get rid of the false you or the false ego you which is the self that you know to go to no self, you got to become as a child. So when I was chasing down birthday cake and ice cream, because I, I, I lost the taste for sweets, believe it or not, in 2000. And the moment I lost the taste for sweets, that's when I got bigger. It was amazing shit that went on. But my girl came in and she started we started, she started eating birthday cake chase down with ice cream. But it's a childlike shit. See, so you got to get rid of that grown mentality. It's got to shed all of that. That is the one that's got you unhappy. You're trying to be an adult. You're trying to be something in this society that's limited. And it's all false. And when you get those things, the house, the car, the accolades, the job, you still feel empty. You see what I'm saying? But, but the key here is you have to dissolve all that. One of the best ways to go what is called no self, which I went to in 2002. October the 16th, 2002, I went to no self. That means that Bobby Hemet didn't exist. And I said, damn, who is this person? Then I realized that was the first time I actually saw myself outside of the person that I had been knowing all of my life. Then I realized, this shit is only an illusion, it don't exist. Right. So in that particular case, what the fuck am I worried about any damn thing about what a nigga think or what a whatever kind of thing, or how I behave or whatever. Yeah. All this vanity shit. But one of the keys is also to become a child. So what happens is this. So he came, he said certain things. He said, I'm setting up a mystical realm. A fairy realm, the fairy kingdom. Peter Pan! Peter Pan! And what was Peter Pan? The story was never become a child, never become an adult. And you stay in Never Neverland. That's why they had to take Michael Jackson to trial. He thought he was Peter Pan. You understand what I'm saying? Peter Pan. That's Horace. You see. To become a child. Now, it's one thing to stay a child and you're an adult and you stay a child from childhood. That's a retarded motherfucker. It's a difference. But what we're talking about is adults immersed in adulthood going back to childhood. That's divine. Two different situations. You know, you got some people that never grow up still riding tricycles at fucking 50. <laughs> That's a retarded person. That's an afflicted person. <laughs> but then we're talking about us shedding the old us or the false us and these false accolades. You see what I'm saying? And that's becoming a child. So in so many words, the nigga around that liquor store had it right. Superman. It's so hideous to think of it, 
But they had it right, and they act just like children too. Mm -hmm. They don't give a damn about nothing. <laughs> it's just that they're not conscious. Mm -hmm. So here's a certain variation of how we tune it in. They had the shit right because they have said, fuck society. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just hang around the liquor stuff. Mm -hmm. And they sit on little, little boxes and benches mm -hmm. and stools. <laughs> but if you go to Africa, that's what the grown men do too. Yeah. Sit around a damn tree. Woman be goddamn doing millet. Cooking fish, and them niggas be sitting around the damn tree talking shit. And the white man say these are childlike people. No, they're spiritual. Because when you lose that innocence, that's when the spirit breaks down. So what I'm trying to say here is, it's okay to fail if you're conscious. So I'm saying, I ain't talking about, you know you got to feed some damn children and some stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? You know, and I'm not talking about divorcing yourself from society either. You know, Frankie Beverly and Mays come to town, goddamn go see them. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. The sister Kendalee, down in Atlanta, she took a belly dance class. Well, the motherfuckers who teach in the belly dance class is white, white, white women. And so we got a few black people come in there and she took the belly dance class for a year. So they had a recital last Tuesday night. So we all went to the recital, place full of white folks. A few black people sprinkled in there because some of the black people was in the class. And some of the girls that, 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 that's professional now is two black girls, let me tell you. So the main teachers, these two white girls came out, and they're supposed to be the people that teach belly dance. Now, if you get Basil Davison's tape, remember John Henry Cross said two tapes on Africa came out in the 80s and the 90s. One was Ali Maserati tape on the history of Africa, and he's a Muslim, and everybody gravitated towards him, but he had an Islamic flavor to it. And then the white boy, the British guy, had one, Basil Davison, and his thing on Africa, a lot of people didn't buy it, he dropped science. He even had Diop in his shit. But he went down to Nubia, and they showed these black women sit there. They stand before the men, and they do this shit with their hips real slow, and they get you into that shit. And that's the origin of the whole belly dance thing. So even the belly dance with the fast, it was all black. It comes from Africa, Egypt, Nubia. So they did start it off with the black girl coming out with the fire with Kemet. But the white girls, because she was doing a little, she just started off with the fire a little bit. So the white girls came out and they were doing all the belly dance and stuff like that. And they were professionals. But they were dealing with technique. And I said, I ain't feeling this shit. These crackers done learn the technique. But we know dancing with us, there's the moves in between the techniques. And the moves in between the moves, which is spiritual. In voodoo, they say it's not the drum, it's the spaces in between the drums that you hear. You're bringing nothingness into a certain realm. See what I'm saying? You know niggas and shit, I used to be a dancer. The reason why it resonated so much, and I'm like, wait a minute now, I was a dancer. I done been on the goddamn dance floor and felt the music and went into the zone. Right. <laughs> the difference between Oh, well, we had, the Philadelphia 76ers had Dr. J. Duncan, but they had Bobby Jones Duncan, too. He was one of the white boys at that time to dunk with one hand. But he, that shit was mechanical still. <laughs> Dr. J. made four or five different moves. You see what I'm saying? And I saw down Dominique Wilkins one time in Atlanta. He did a dance. This nigga did some boogaloo shit on the way to the rim. I'm like, God damn, that nigga did about a that nigga did about a full course dance before he got to the rim. It's like he stopped time and that nigga was boogieing. While he going to the rim, I'm like, God damn, they need to slow that shit down. That spirit. So them white girls, they had the technique. They done went. One girl was a white Arab from Turkey. She was born into this shit. But they lost that damn melanin somewhere over the years. And she was doing it, and then she was the one that brought the techniques from Turkey. And I said, I ain't feeling this shit. It's just like, I'm a dancer. There's some moves within moves that you can incorporate in that shit. 
And then the black girl came out, and she was the professional. And this motherfucker came out with a sword, a long ass sword on her head. And they said, be, they said, get out of the way because the sword is sharp. And she put that sword on her head, and she came out there and started doing some shit with her body. And it was slower than the rest of the shit, but she had moves with them moves. And the white folks was taking pictures and, and shit like that. And as soon as she did that, the whole atmosphere and the energy changed in the room. Mm -hmm. And then when the white girls came out, they could do shit a little better because she created the melanin in that zone. And then they got a little better when they came out, but it's only until that black girl came out. You see what I'm saying? On that particular energy type thing. So it's a lot of shit that's going on on that level and stuff, you see. And so, going back, to this particular pan energy that's here, you must allow yourself to get those pieces of society that have made us this mechanical robot in an ongoing cycle trying to survive. Survival. You see what I'm saying? You got, you know, survival. That's 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 the key. You know the whole story, they say that um a child has to have a childhood and allow himself to play a certain time in order for him to be a great adult. He got to have a certain amount of childhood. And they said what fucked up with the Africans was, or the black people is, when we was in slavery, we only had from birth to seven years old to play, and then we had to go to the fields. You see what I'm saying? But then again, on the other hand, you're supposed to play, man, until you're supposed to be playing until you about 15. You see what I'm saying? That's what white children do. Yeah. They play for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. You see? And so, but us, we sometimes it's so hard in our society that we don't play. And so the white boy came in and said, now we got to wipe them out. We got to reduce this playing level down to back to seven. And now you're into the hip hop and it's all about being hard. So your little child is being hard. See, you're supposed to be a Madea on the ass. You're supposed to beat them anytime they show any forms of ego and all that hardship. Because what they're trying to do here, they, they, they produce them, they produce that adult realm into them too early. And as a result, you see why these motherfuckers lining up the damn jailhouse and killing people. They didn't have enough time to play. And now they all hard. Two little babies and shit, all hard and stuff. Well, he got on the Timberlands and all that shit, and he all hard. And you supposed to be, don't you know when, you, when your parents came up, if you show any form of adulthood, they lit into your ass. <laughs> Come here, boy. Hold out your goddamn lip. Ha! <laughs> now, why do they do that? They were drill sergeants. They were to break down that ego and humble yourself. In the movie Medea, she beat that girl, she pulled out that bag of belts, put them on that goddamn uh, 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 iron board and beat that girl ass, and when she got through, the girl started making straight B's, but she had to, she and, and, and A, but she had to beat that adult out of her. You see what I'm saying? You see. So, so, on the other hand, we have to, on this other flip side of us conscious, we got to introduce play in our life, and it's not in your life, in your mind. You see what I'm saying? You gotta produce play, and you gotta start looking at things on a simple level. See, it's a difference to look at things on a simple level with no knowledge. But now you got knowledge, in order to make that knowledge, transform that knowledge into pure energy that can work to you, you gotta start looking at things on a play level. And what happens is here, there's a whole mystical world that opened up. The fairy king. Now remember the sister Lena Jeffries, you know Lena Jeffries, the scholar, wife, Rosalind Jeffries, she had been going to damn Africa since 1960 or 1957. I don't know, it was early. And she said, she saw my lectures and she went in there and started telling the Africans on these metaphysical things. And they looked at her and pointed to the trees. This is what she told me in 1994. They looked at her and pointed to the trees, and she saw little people in the trees in Africa. They pointed to the trees, and there was little people inside of the trees playing in the trees, fairies. She said, I've been coming here for damn near 30 something years. Why didn't you, why didn't you show me this 
before they say you never asked, which means you wouldn't have been ready for it. <laughs> when she started asking these mystical questions, then they showed her. But see, they got Jesus over there now, and all that's an illusion now. That's evil, and so it starts to disappear. So they got them. And where we were in the 1930s with this Jesus, this religious shit. It's all a game. But the fairy kingdom opens up. Now, there's a, a this god, goddess Saint Martha. She has this little boy that's with her. And I, I should have brought the picture. And it's a little boy. And we couldn't find the name. And this St. Martha came. I'll show you some pictures of St. Martha. I should have I should have put it on the overhead. But it's this Afro woman with a snake from Louisiana. This is a picture of her as a this is a picture of her with the snake and the dreads. And this is her as the Afro woman. Now I drew this woman in 1991. And she's been hanging on my wall since 1991, and I just found out about St. Martha in August. But I had the damn picture of her I drew in 1991. That's only. Hmm? That's only when has a fantastic arts. Mm. So this is interesting. She has a little boy that you can't see in here. It's a little baby. And I was laying on the bed, and the little baby came and put his hand in my hand. And so the spirit was like telling the sister, saying, it's a little baby and it can't walk. I'm saying, is it, is it paraplegic or something? Is it, you know, a para, you know, is it paralyzed? She said, no, it's an infant. And it, it, and it dawned on me this thing, put his hand in, and I said, well, what is this thing? And it just only registered about a month ago, or two weeks ago, that the baby it was a form of harvest that she was, she was dealing with. And I said, we need to get the name of that baby. Because, you know, Harvest is, these names, these older names become generic names. Because in the new cycle, they have new names. You're like, Pan is an old name. So I said, well, what is this name? And she said, Zanat. Zanat. Or Zanath. Or Zanat. That's the new name of this baby energy. Which is your soul. See, the baby putting his hand, see, this is a great mystery. How they, you know, Bobby got Jesus running around his house, no. <laughs> or harvest, no. This is a great mystery, we must teach on this. The baby that put its thing in my hand only exists through my soul. My soul is harvest, your soul is the baby, hop across the harvest. And the baby that put his whole, and although it looked like an outside entity, it was nothing but coming through the doorway, which is my soul. And that's what's all in us. It's, what we're explaining here is different portions of your soul. You get where I'm coming from here? Mm -hmm. But your soul now has to be opened up, but it's a baby. It's a child energy. Not in the baby sense of gag gag goo goo, but in another fairy realm. You see, this little thing here is a form of a fairy. That best character. And he represents the outer realm. Outside the circles of time. He represents the outer realm, so therefore, the best thing you can do to open that up is to become childlike in your mind. Some of these things don't have to be a physical act. You see, but sometimes just give yourself the freedom to just, if something resonates, just do it. Just do it, you know what I'm saying? And don't say, I can't do that because I'm grown, or I can't do that because I got this degree. I can't do that because I'm this particular thing. You see what I'm saying? Just do the shit. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You know, I don't know what it could be. It could be riding on top of the car. I don't know shit. <laughs> you know, or something that you always wanted to do. You might want to, I always want to slide down one of them goddamn staircases. <laughs> when them long ones, they ain't never seen no, I ain't never seen a big enough mansion to do the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that escalator in the mall ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> see, so this is the kind of energy we're talking about, talking, talking about dealing with. <clears throat> okay. Now, I want to go into this. You see some stuff fell on the floor. Do I need it? I want to go into this to show you spirits. 
Okay, let me get, get, let me get one thing. Y'all bear with me. I'm going to go into this. This is very important. We hear stories of the ancient people. You never hear any of them returning. <coughs> Not a whisper. Okay, come on, Bob. That's what I want to hear. Never hear any of them returning. Now, let me go into this story, and I'm going to show you something here. In 1904, British occultist Alistair Crawley went to Egypt with his wife on honeymoon. He got married to his wife, Rose. He went to Egypt. Now, Rose is a British Victorian woman that don't know nothing about nothing. He married a complete idiot. She's good folks, but she's an idiot, as knowledge goes. So they over in Kemet, and she start going into trance. And she tells him, that the child Horace is summoning you and it's all about the child. She said, no, Horace is coming to you or something and it's all about the child. So he walked around again. He said, this motherfucker out of her mind. This stupid motherfucker don't know shit. <laughs> she came and told him again and then he realized, wait a minute. This fool right here, but it was coming through. So she said, okay. He said, okay. He took her to two museums in Cairo to look for the statues. And he pointed out all the statues of Horace. Couldn't find nothing. Went and he pointed out another museum and he pointed out all the statues of Horace again. And they couldn't find them. They stayed the whole day. And at the end of the day, there was this particular stone or stella in a glass case. That's the one that's up on the wall up there. Real powerful. Real powerful. The Stella revealing. And with that stone of Stella in a glass case, and she said, that's the thing that was summoning you. So he took this stone of Stella and had it transcribed and translated at the people in the museum. Then he set up a ritual on April 8th, 9th, and 10th of, 2000, of, of 1904. And he set up a ritual, because I've talked about this before, but I'm telling you, this is the, some energy that came back. He set up a ritual, and the entity Awas came through, who also was a form of harvest. You can get that connection. Um, um, the works of Kenneth Grant, British occultist, talks about it, but also in the book on um, Pyramids of Montauk. They give you the, by Peter Preston Nichols and Peter Moon. And this entity, Awas, who was a form of Horace, came through. And he dictated this book of the law, April 8th, 9th, and 10th. Real powerful book. Um, they still translated in 90 years, and it's still, they got stuff in there that they, you know, it's proven that it's coming from a high intelligence because they've been translating it and having commentaries on it for 90 years and they still, when they come back, there's, there's a whole new translation of the book as far as whole new stuff they find out about the book um, 100 years later. Since uh, 100 years later, uh, 102 years later as of now. <laughs> now, he said that the Awas angel was a tall, dark man in his 30s. And he had on a, not Arab dress, but a, 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 an Assyrian dress. Like Assyria, some type of, you know, Arabian, Assyrian, some type of ancient dress that now, you know. And the key here is, they had the Book of the Law and they set up the whole OTO and these people, they got, they got chapters of this shit all over the planet. Australia, South Africa, India, Japan, they got them all over. The key here is that they have come to 
to a hole in the wall or they'll become to a brick wall because they can't produce anything on the level of what they think they can. They have a lot of information to come from this stuff, but they have never been able to produce nothing out of this because only thing Crawley's aspect did was to bring the book of the law to the earth because at that particular time black people were in slavery and I mean early 1904 we were still in a mental slavery. Shit, that's questionable now whether we out. So you know in 1904, nigga wasn't nothing but a harmonica blowing whatever. And the ones that was the intellectuals that was trying to put the pieces back together, they wasn't getting nothing this advanced. So it had to come to him, which they said that he was a black man, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to to to, to receive that kind of energy. So you know, so you know, African Lineage. Remember, and even in this new uh, Henry Louis Gates thing, the one of the white boys said that he had some nigger in his man. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, so they got a little shit mixed up in the tree. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Or uh, he wouldn't have been able to take this particular energy. So now, the great mystery here is, and they know this, what you call it is this. Number one, he said they, they, they've identified Awas as a form of Horace because in the book of the law, Awas said, I am the minister of Harpocrates. That's the child. But, I know it's perplexing to them when they study the Stella and what threw them off was Alistair Crawley kept thinking that he was this particular high priest on the Kunsu. He kept thinking that he was an incarnation of this and he wasn't. So it threw them off for years and I think the Spirit had them to do that. But I think they realize one thing now and I think they really fucked up about it because they said he was a tall, dark man in his 30s with the face of a savage king, which is African king. This is 1904 talking in Britain. But if you look at the Stella itself, this is Ankhok the Kunsu. This is a tall, dark man in his 30s. And he's a black man. He's a Negroid. And he's looking here and addressing a form of the hawk-headed mystical lord, Ra Har Kuit, known as Ra Heru Kahuti, or Harmachis, or Harpocrates. Because Harpocrates is the god within him. Now this is the mystery. He's at, so if this is harvest, and this stella is set up to Ankhok Nakunsu, and this is Horace, this, this God Horace is on the inside of him. He's addressing his soul. <laughs> Which means that the black man is Horace. Which is Jesus. Now I'm trying to, trying to understand this. We got all these ancient texts talking about the coming yeah, come on. of a Messiah. Now the esoteric people know that the coming of the Messiah, and they, and they got books that say the Messiah is a race of people. Well, it would have to be because all the, when all these texts was written, like it or not, wasn't nothing on the planet but black people. Because these texts go back tens of thousands of years. You understand what I'm saying? So that goes without saying. But the problem here is. None of those other texts ever had a historical person to actually come from the past into the future except this particular stellar. Now, if you look, I wish I had, I, I wish I had, let me see if I got it. Uh, they got the front of the stellar and they got the back of the stellar. The back of the stella is hieroglyphic writing. I'm just going to put it this way. And this is the front of the stella. It's the same picture. I know this is far. But remember Moses was holding up two oval looking tablets? And then he broke them and called the Ten Commandments and stuff. Well, isn't it interesting that these are the front and the back of the same tablets? Now it goes a little further to show you what's going on here. And the white boy know this shit. This mark off the Kunsu and this particular Stella and this tablet is something 
And the fourth and ten commandments, but then he wrote a book called the Book of the Law. Now, this is interesting. To show you how deep this thing goes. Well, the first thing, let's go into a bit of history on how I know this stuff is, is, is with us. According to um, Kenneth Grant, the British occultist, and in his book called uh, Alistair Crawley, The Hidden God, 1972, he talks about when this Awas character came in and dictated this book of the law to Crawley, he disappeared, never to be seen again on the planet, except when he came and inspired Crawley to write this book, the holy books of the Lemma. Of the Lemma. And it's interesting here because in one of the chapters called, um, uh, one of the chapters called, uh, there's several chapters and stuff, I can't think of the chapter, Leva Tesdi, the talk, this entity comes through and says, I am the Lord of the black earth, and I did not come to check, I did not come to chastise you. I bid you not to turn away. I bid you from turning away from all your voluptuous follies. All your voluptuous behavior in your follies. So this particular God says, hey, do what thy will. It ain't about the physical world and what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You can have that goddamn Thunderbird wine. Now why did I say Thunderbird wine? They got a black man living up in the Bronx that's 115 years old. And the crackers wanted to know what his diet consisted of. To let you know I was telling you about it. It's all in your mind. His, design, his, he, his diet consists of Every day, he eats bread smothered in fat bag and a half a gallon of Thunderbird wine. Isn't Another fuck 150, diet? huh? Isn't Thunderbird an eating diet? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's a form of horrors. But he, he, he drinks a half a gallon of Thunderbird wine and bread smothered in fat bag. And they said, why don't you smother it in something else like some beef or what? He said, too lean. <laughs> but my point here is, it's his mind. See what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's his mind. Now, where was I going? What I was trying to say here was, he said, I bid you not to turn from your voluptuous ways and all your follies. Because you God. Now, you think that's rough? You go to the Gospel of Thomas. This is the one that was dug up in Egypt in 1904, no, in 1945, and this is the Gnostic Jesus, which is harvest, before the Romans stole it and turned it into that, that debauchery of the Jesus of moralism. And in there, they're asking this Jesus, what can we do? What can we do you know, what kind of diet you want us to go on? What you want to do with meditation? He said, shit, damn the diet. Blessed is the man who eats the lion. And cursed is the man who gets eaten by the lion. <laughs> they say, because if you eat the lion, the man, the lion will become a part of the man. But if cursed is the man who gets eaten by a lion and a man becomes a part of a lion. That's not necessarily talking about that you don't supposed to watch your diet. You know what I'm saying? Niggas eating goddamn you know, pork rinds and funyuns and all kind of shit like that. It's not talking about that, but it's also talking about you don't suppose to damn get to the point where that becomes a religion. Mm -hmm. They got a whole black vegetarian society. Mm -hmm. They done took this shit from what they eat in the goddamn mouth to it's a religion now. Mm -hmm. And they invite, well, they, they invite people who speak on diet every year. And it's religion. And they sit around and talk about what other niggas eat. <laughs> and you should see the vegetarians now. Something wrong with them. They're all dried up. They look sick. See what I'm saying? And niggas eating chicken glowing. <laughs> so what's happening here though is, is this is it's metaphysical. It's like my brother. 
He got so much into it to basically his 24 hours is constantly what's going to harm him. And as a result, it's, he becomes a victim of that. And they send in, it sends memory to that which is going to harm him. And he has to be very strict. Because like I said, that nigga like to die when he ate some white rice. <laughs> Damn, they like to die. Because he done programmed his mind that the shit going to gonna hurt him. But yet they showed the, the, in the autobiography of the yogi, they showed a yogi master, the motherfucker tried to feed him poison, and he drank the poison, and the other motherfucker got sick and gave him the poison. So my point here is, this new, this Jesus come by, he said, I ain't judging you based on what you do immoralistically. Now, it's nothing but the, your own soul talking, because the, the, the mystery here, there is no Jesus. There's only your soul, which is called the Christ, Christos. The alchemical term for Christ, when it illuminates, is Christos. And when it illuminates, it has the wings with the dot. Right. Jesus is coming with the healing in the wings. You ever heard that shit? <laughs> that's it. And that's the black dot. You see, this is in him. You see what I'm saying? And this is him. And all of it is coming from Newt. Newt had it, the black dot, which is called Behutit. They said that the, the guy translated it wrong. It's Behutit, Heru Behutit, the god of the disc. The black dot is the manifestation, had it, the manifestation of Newt. So this, manif Newt manifests herself as the black dot and manifestation of Newt and ends up as Ra Heru Kahuti or Raha Cuban, which is inside of this particular God. Now, the key here is, they said that they ain't never been able to contact him. <clears throat> they said they heard from him in 79. It's a pitiful story. They heard from him in 79. <laughs> and that's it. And yet, I met this entity at the Spanx Metaphysical Bookstore on October the 16th, 1993. Because his, 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 his number is 93418, and in 1993, I met him at the Spanx Metaphysical Bookstore. I can't think of this psychic name. She was in the store. I met this, this girl that went to Spelman, and she said, there's a guy standing behind you with this dress on, a Syrian dress. And I said, damn, I just read that story two weeks ago. And I met him in 1993, uh, and been in contact with him ever since. I heard talk from him, talked to the nigga yesterday. Now what is this saying here? How is it that I can get on the phone or I can get some, some oracle and I can call this motherfucker up at will, but white folks ain't seen him in 26 years. They might have think they heard from him in 79, but you really they ain't seen the nigga in 100 years. And what does that say? It ain't got nothing to do with me, Bobby him, and it got something to do with the accessibility that we got as a doggone spirit people. Right. And the only reason why they met him and stuff in 1904, and they couldn't do nothing after that because they don't have the DNA and the genetic shit. You see what I'm saying? Well, let's go a little further. In this thing, they said, well, we got to really study this. Because according to Horace being Jesus, and Jesus is the Christians are waiting for Jesus to come back, number one is a white man. You understand what I'm saying? And number one is a moral teacher to this shit here. It ain't gonna never happen. So they said, oh, then that means that the Jesus did come back, or Horace, which is the real thing, did come back in 1904. So they said, well, let's study a little more on this. So they got two Egyptologists in 1969 to come in. One is Alan H. Gardner, who is a renowned Egyptologist, the grandfather of Martin Bernal, who wrote the book Black Athena, and wrote the book Egyptian Grammar. That is the book that you learn how to speak. It's a real key book to learn how to speak meta meta is you get the Egyptian Grammar book. And it'll cost about $150. They still sell it. He wrote the book on how to grammar the, to, to, to pronounce the stuff. It's one thing to read it, it's another thing for the phonetics of it, or the phonics. I don't know if the phonetics is the right word. I don't want to make up a new word, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, so they call in master hieroglyphic expert 
Alan H. Gardner and another guy called Gunn, because it's called the Gardner Gunn Translation. Now, when they started translating this thing, and I want to show you this, I want to read one line on what they translated. Not only, they said, well, you know, he might not be harmless. It, you know, in, in any way, his name is on top of the Kansu now, look. First of all, he was a high priest in the 26th dynasty, it's 27th dynasty. One of the keys here, we talking some real shit, we ain't talking about no fake ass Jesus that never existed. We talking some real shit, this is his sarcophagus. It's in the British Museum now, Uncle Uncle the Kunsu. Got a mama, daddy, and all this shit. Was a real high priest in Kemet who put this stella together to contact himself in the new eon, which is the modern future. The stella is called a stone. Now, when you go get the movie again, Unbreakable, and take Bruce Willis' role and put um, Samuel L. Jackson role, a role in it, because we are the Unbreakable. But when you look at Samuel L. Jackson, when he first comes and Bruce Willis come to meet him, he's standing in front of, he's sitting down in front of a stellar Rebina, and it looked like this. To let you know who the real deal Christ is, it's us. Now, so this is all about the country. We're talking about, this is what the white boy knows. All that Jesus shit, the deal is done. The gig is up. They found out the real shit in 1904. And then hot. They, they so jealous until the, 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 the Los Angeles OTO went down and had some fucked up shit in the damn Watts riots, fucking up niggas. Because they was jealous. Because they know we the shit. See what I'm saying? Now, so they got, this is, do you understand what I'm saying here? All the people waiting and all that shit. The white folks knew for a fucking 102 years that the shit is us and the Jesus done came back. <laughs> and that's why J. Edgar Hoover said we must mobilize and neutralize the rise of a black messiah. <laughs> well, why do you think it's you in the West? Because one of the names of Osiris is called the West. Which leads us to this particular translation. And this is what it says. I want to read this thing to you on when they translated this stellar revealing. And it says, at the bottom of the doggone melanetta, front and back, and I should have had the back piece. It says, translated, 1969. It says, I am, I am prepared and I shine forth as one who is prepared. I have made my way to the place which are Ra, Tum, Kepha, and Hathor. And then it says, and this is what it says, Osiris the priest of Mentu, of Thebes, Ankhok Nakunsu, justified. And the next thing it says, and I open to him, Lo Osiris Ankhok the Kunsu, justified. This is a form of Osiris return. Osiris, Osiris returns at what? As what? As Horus, his son. That's the resurrection. Now Ankhok the Kunsu means Lord of the Moon. Okay? So immediately in 1969, when they had the other translation, because they didn't know whether the guy who translated in 1904 was right. So they had these people and immediately what they did, they rushed in and said, God damn it, we got to do a ritual. We know we can't go to the moon. But we can't send the monkey. Who gonna go somewhere and you don't send the monkey? Now let's think about this shit here now. You send the goddamn monkey up in space. <laughs> but you go into the moon and you don't send the monkey. Okay? So they go in and they fight the Apollo landings. Yes, sir. 
they got a star on Hollywood and Bond <laughs> with a television set on it with all the um, astronauts' name on it. If y'all ever go to LA, it's on Hollywood and Bond with one. They got a television set and they got a star for that. Right. The astronauts, I was just... It's, they fake the lunar landings. Now let's think about this a minute now. Since when do you know white folks to go somewhere and don't return? <laughs> Hell, you can't even get goddamn real estate if you got child support. They won't let you get a house, a ragged ass house that white folks done fought in for 35 years. <laughs> you won't get a, they won't let you get a house on a ragged ass piece of land. And yet you mean to tell me you got one of the greatest real estates in the universe and you don't go back and you say you went there? I ain't buying this shit. You've been building space stations for the last 30 years, but you ain't gonna go back to the moon. Wait a minute now, let's think about this a minute. I do believe if you walk out there and the moon is bright enough, you can see craters on the moon with your naked eye. Yeah. If the, that means if they landed on the goddamn crater, that crater would be as big as the Atlantic Ocean. And they got pictures of them on the moon, and they don't see one star in the pictures. Mm. See what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> you see, it's all fake. Yes, they didn't go to no damn moon. Mm -hmm. They killed 300 people connected to the Apollo land and the Hyatt then made a movie called Capricorn One and just changed it to Mars mm. where they faked the Apollo land. It was all fake. And then in 1971, when Sean Connery's last movie, Diamonds Are Forever, they put the fake landing in the movie. And they was fighting and they went into a, broke into a sound stage and they was faking the Apollo landing. Come on, man. Yeah. They'll never be able to go up there. Because the moon got more mystical shit than the damn sun in the damn esoteric stuff. And it's one of the last mysteries. You think that sun come out every damn day, you just feel happy and nice. Well, let that moon fuck up the wrong way, and your ass be in for it. Oh, yes. Shit be happening. Yes. Mood swings, <laughs> lunatics. Right. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yes, <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? That moon is directly related to black people, and the white man could never conquer that. And here it is ago, mind control. But I remember when I was young, being innocent again, because I was from the educated family. So we tend to look at the news, and so we uh, indoctrinated and thinking that shit is real. And I used to walk in the neighborhood, and all them niggas and mullins that wasn't educated, none of them ever believed that they went to the moon because they was dealing with spirit. They said, ain't nobody went to no moon. And we used to look at them like they crazy. Because we believe that goddamn white man in that 1969 bullshit. Elijah Muhammad said that uh, they didn't go to the moon. They never go to no moon. He laughed. Mm -hmm. He said they could never go to them stars or none of that shit. Mm -hmm. no, they would have have McDonald's on that motherfucker right now. So I'm saying? And a Marriott. <laughs> Come on, man. They be having the Academy Awards on the moon tomorrow night. Motherfuckers be floating around and shit on the red carpet on the moon. We ain't stupid. Come on, man. They, this minute they ever been any place on this planet and didn't try to never take it so you ain't never getting it back. And here you got a whole real estate up there, you be like, well, fuck it. They say it's so goddamn dangerous to go up that shit that they don't know what the fuck. Because you got to ask yourself this. The Russians was in the space race with them. They first did Sputnik and it fucked America up with fuck Sputnik. Why the Russians ain't never went? Because number one, they all one people, but the Russians are like, shit, you crazy as hell. You ain't never been to no moon, and nobody ain't going to attempt to go there. I want to ask you a question now, because this is just perplexing. You can't go from damn New York to California without running out of gas. <laughs> in a big old motherfucking diesel truck. And yet they got a lunar shit about as big as this table, and they going to go a billion miles without running out of gas? Come on, man, am I stupid? <laughs> then this what really fucks the shit up. They got a picture of them blasting off from the moon coming back. We need to ask the question, who was taking the picture? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you were blasting off from the moon. But mind control is a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But they got two white boys exposed to the truth, and they both live like in obscurity 
because the temps on their life. One live in a trailer with 200 cats. He got to act like he's crazy so they don't kill him. <laughs> he put the cats around him so the government said, well, we can, if, if he come with that shit now, he got all them cats, we can always say he's crazy. <laughs> he had to do that so they didn't kill him because they killed 200, two to 300 people. With the, the, and stuff. But they had to do it, but it's the same as what you call him based on his Osiris and the moon. And they said, we must conquer the moon. Because his name is the Lord, I'm going to come to is the Lord of the moon. Hmm. Which, who is the Lord of the moon? We the Lord of the moon. It was off? No, no, no. Let me cut it off. Out of 4, 2005, they sent a probe out there and it blew a hole in it. And the stuff started leaking. And it was all happy about it, but they said that the media contained building blocks that was in existence before this particular solar system was formed. Mm -hmm. Now try to understand DNA and try to understand the latent aspect of melanin, because your melanin is your DNA. Mm -hmm. Now, with us, we have this God particle inside of us, but it's dormant. As above, so below. As within, so without. If they mess with something in the space, that's something that's going on inside of us. So they blew open something that had been in existence before the solar system formed. As a result, they have released particles of, 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 of melanin, dormant melanin cells, or dormant metachlorians, they call the space. They call the, the, uh, they call the force. The dark side of the force, the metachlorians, they release these microscopic organisms inside of us by this one act. And the shit now is flowing out. They said that you was going to be able to see like certain, like that rhyme, you was going to see certain particles in the sky that look like stars <coughs> falling out of the sky in like certain states. Not, it over the not only that, <coughs> not, not only that, <laughs> Um, this thing is so, what happened here is, see, it's called a nexus factor. Everything up there is connected on a grid. So, wherever you are in the universe, it's all the damn same. It all comes together as one fabric in space. So you can't go and pick one floating by a meteorite and fuck with it and don't think you ain't fuck with everything in the universe which is also inside of us. It's a chain reaction. See what I'm saying? The microcosm and the macrocosm. They blew this thing open and the spirit said shit, we convinced them to do it. The spirits is always, and I say look at the bigger picture. You be like, well why would they do something like that? Why would they fuck around like that? Knowing this might be their end. And why are we going to sleep sleeping giant like us? And the Spirit say we influence them yes. mm -hmm. to do shit right. like that. Yes. And they all happy and stuff, and they done messed around with this Titan one, and, and they call this shit Temple One. They just as might as well. Now, in the H.P. Lovecraft, which is the one that's the master of horror, he talks about there is a place in the universe where all the spears meet, and there's a God that sits up there with hands and stuff that look like that dancing Shiva with multiple arms. And they say all the spears in the universe meet within the same entity. You see. And they call him Yog Sothos. He knows he's the gateway to the whole entire omniverse. And those systems, and they blew this damn temple one open, and the stuff is going on on the inside of us. And now it's done, released the latent DNA now, which is called the child. That's the hardest factor in our soul. And this stuff is coming on, and we don't know what might happen during spring equinox. Mm. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. Summer came in January in Atlanta. So what they have to do, it would get to 70 degrees, and that means it was going to go on up to 80. So what they would have to do is go up with the chemtrails yeah. and drop those chemtrails all over Atlanta to create Kim Dome the next day. Now it'd be bright and sunny one day, the next day it's great, and then it rains and then they bring, they bring a cool air to fool people to think that we still got the seasons that we got, but them seasons is gone. Yeah. 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 
Now, one brother down in Atlanta done the calculations based on the Gregorian calendar. And based on the Gregorian calendar, this is 2012 that they talk about the Mayan calendar. Some stuff is going on because you can't go by, if you say the Mayan calendar, you can't use it based on trying to go by this calendar. This calendar is damn near 10 years off. You see, the shit is going on now. Show you another thing, too. I'm saying, damn, Richard Pryor dies, mm -hmm. Lou Rawls dies, mm -hmm. Arthur Davis dies, mm -hmm. Barry White dies, mm -hmm. Luther dies, mm -hmm. Slappy White dies, mm -hmm. uh, who else? Bunch of people. Uh, Wilson, Pickett. Wilson Pickett dies, mm -hmm. huh? ODB dies, you're all right. And ODB, his last shit was called what? Osiris. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? All these people die, and you be like, damn, what's the fuck going on? So I'm walking in Walmart, and the Spirit give it to me. They say, look, we at the gateway to the other side. Mm -hmm. Say, shit, we can't damn have the other side coming in, and ain't got no interesting characters of them spiritual muses, they gotta be on the damn other side, lining up the damn place. They went to the other side yeah. to get the shit, get the party ready. Yeah. Where we go? I'm like, damn, that's right, these motherfuckers is getting up out of here. Right. And they getting up out of here, man, because shit, the other side is what's happening. Right. Sunrise say space is the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sunrise. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, some might say space is the place. Right. See what I'm saying? From slave ship to spaceship. Yeah, and all of, and all of the damn, and earth went in fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 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 Parliament, Funkadelic, all that shit, and nothing but a uh, 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 plagiarization of Sun Ra. Mm -hmm. That all that stuff come from Sun Ra, the space stuff, the pyramids, and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? He was obscure, and yes, I don't say it's a plagiarization because because Earth, Earth and Fire and Parliament was supposed to take those ideas and bring them to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to main obscure because that's the way his stuff was. You see what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to make here is they went to the other side because the other side is what's happening. The reason why I know that is this. See, they ain't let all these Mexicans in this country mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. You gotta look at the way they do things. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They ain't let all these Mexicans in the country. And wherever you go, you go to Chicago, it's, it's El Segundo. <laughs> you go to Atlanta, that shit is Mexican. They ain't let them people in here because the elite is abandoned in this country. Yeah. Now, they do rituals. Bush job is to come here and be the god of war Mars which is Osiris no which is Horus Mars is Horus the word Mars also there's a god called Morris Moa but the god of war Mars is Horus now Horus' father Osiris was defeated and then Horus comes back and avenges his father's death and takes the people into further into a war that his father started. <laughs> you see how this, now, now Bush was defeated, Bush Sr. was defeated, that his son has to come and avenge his father and take this the whole Horus script on why they put this shit down the way it is. And this cracker here don't give a damn about nothing. And guess what? Everything he get, 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 get you into, he come back a month later and say the shit backfired. Mm -hmm. Shit wasn't right. His job is to tear up America because the global elite saying, hell, we ain't trying to even live here. And they say, look, okay, Africa is depleted. We done got what we got out of there. And the only thing we know is, is every cell phone, they got some shit in Africa. They, they, these new cell phones from the last, from, 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 from 1998 on up can't work now unless it's got something that's coming from Africa in these cell phones. Mm -hmm. You best believe they ain't gonna never free no Africa as long as Africa got some shit that the cell phones need. So, they decided, look, we need a new place that we can 
go to be an indigenous place that we can go when we live in Europe now, because that's what the whole European Union, and that's why they're raising India up as the new oasis. Mm -hmm. They get ready to abandon America. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're using Bush to tear this thing up, mm -hmm. which is all good because they, hey, it's something got to give. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Something got to give. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, shoot, niggas is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. But he's playing the Horace. He's playing the Horace role. That's what his role is. You see? Now, I ain't saying he hard. I'm just saying this is the way they line up shit in their ritual. They take our shit, you see what I'm saying, and line it up that way. You see, you got to understand what's going on. You need to go pick up a movie. Remember, The Matrix came out, one, two, and three. And the third one, they missed it. Horace don't supposed to be dying on no damn cross and his woman all dead up. Harvest is supposed to be the light of the world. So what Neil doing dying on some little thing like he Horace, like he Osiris, and his woman died. And his woman died. They, they totally dropped the bomb on, on the last one. That's why you got to go get a movie that went straight to video. <laughs> got an all-star cast. They put old motherfuckers in this shit. Ernest Borgnine. This thing was made last year. It's called Renegade. It's a movie that they fool you. They took the whole um, Matrix thing and put it in the Old West. And it's about a guy that fighting over a woman. And one guy killed and one guy kills the woman and whatever. And there's two guys, and one is an evil guy, and one is a horror like figure. And they go through the whole West, but the other one, the 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 first the, the, the young guy who is the nice guy, not the evil guy, he get his ass whipped and they throw him out in the damn desert. And the Native Americans take his ass and bring him back, uh, nurse him back to life and teach him there his ways. He goes back through the West and he meets up with the guy years later who is his nemesis and they're trying to search for a book that's got a key for a doorway so that they can go to another reality. And when they find the book, the Native Americans come up in there and put them all together and tell them, look, now it's time for you all to meet your destiny and give them some damn sacred mushrooms. <laughs> and they go to the next round and they show the guy chakra system open up, heart chakra, kundalini third eye, all that. And so much until when you see it and your shit start opening up, I'm like, damn. <laughs> and he go in there and he does away with his foe. And then when he come back, he raises up and he goes out to the pond and his girl is out there and she jumps in the water. And they go, he jumps in the water up under her and she got her legs wide open. And he goes up into her swimming and her legs are wide open like he going back into the great mother. They made it in, in the western days so they made sure she had a whole big hairy bush so when she opened up wide you can't really see the vagina. But the shit is the shit with the matrix supposed to, it's called renegade. Now there's two renegades out you got to get the one that's the 